In this problem, there's a positive charge Q distributed along the x-axis between 0 and A. And we're going to find the electric field due to that charge distribution along the positive x-axis to the right of the charge distribution. And we're going to chart, find the force between that charge distribution and a point charge located on the positive x-axis. So I'm going to draw another picture here. And here's my charge distribution. And I'm interested in what's happening at some point to the right of that charge distribution on the x-axis. And I'm going to find the uh, electric field. There's nothing um, hidden in this problem. They ask you for the electric field and for the force, so we don't really have to figure out what we're trying to find. And we have a formula for electric field from a point charge and for electric field for a charge distribution. So we'll use the electric field for the charge distribution formula. And so the first thing I like to do is indicate, pick some point on my charge distribution, some sort of uh, not a special point, but just some random point how about uh, one right here? And we'll call that DQ. Okay, so that's our, our small, our infinitesimal element of charge, DQ. And we want to know what effect does that element of charge, that DQ, have at some point out here on the positive x-axis. And this R squared in our equation, the R in our equation, is always the distance between dq and the point of interest. That's r. Okay, so the first thing we see is that this dq is positive, so it's going to create an electric field at, at our point of interest. It's going to create an electric field pointing to the right. I'm going to call that DE. And what we want to do is add up all the effects to electric field from the different DQs in our charge distribution. And we can do that. This is a very easy example because all the DQs produce DEs pointing in the exact same direction, right? And any point on this charge distribution, whether I'm out here at the tip it's going to produce an electric field to the right on the positive x-axis. Any point is going to produce an electric field to the right. And because it's a vector quantity, if they're all the vectors point in the same direction, we can just add them up. So I can write this equation, E is equal to K times the integral of dQ over R squared, and I can just use that to find the total electric field. I don't have to break it up into components because it's already all pointing in the x-direction. So I've got an integral with dq and with r, and I need to figure out what to do with that. So the first thing I'm going to deal with is dq. What is that little element of charge? Well, it's my density, the charge per unit length, multiplied by the length of dq. And the length of dq is our length element dx. So this is the total charge over the total length multiplied by dx. The next thing I need to figure out is what is r? Because I only want to integrate over one thing. Now I've got this dq in terms of dx, so I want to get r in terms of x also. So r is going to equal the total distance minus this starting distance. So this uh, this location of dq is x. dq is located x distance in from the, from the origin. And my point of interest is at a plus b. So if I go a plus b minus this initial distance over here, x, 
that'll give me what R is. Okay, the total distance from the origin, the total distance from the origin to the point out here where I'm concerned about is A plus B. And then I have to subtract out this starting distance X, and that gives me R. Okay, so my electric field is K Q over A integral dq integral dx over a plus b minus x the whole thing squared and my integral goes from x equals zero to x equals a we integrate over the charge distribution so that's uh, not too difficult this is a fairly simple uh, integral you can uh, you can do that yourself i think and the integral comes out to be a over B times A plus B. And I still have the same KQ over A out in front. The A's cancel. And my electric field is KQ over B times A plus B. Okay, so this electric field is pointing in the positive x direction. So I'm just going to write it out just so you, it's clear. The vector, in full vector form, it's K capital Q over B times A plus B I hat plus zero, right? J hat. There's no electric field in the y direction. So that's the electric field. In order to find the force, we can just multiply by the, that's, so this was the electric field at the location of our point charge, but it's the electric field being created by our charge distribution. So if we want to find the force on the point charge, we just have to multiply this electric field by the charge of the point charge we're sticking at that location. And there we have it. The last part asks for what happens if we make the assumption that B is much, much greater than A. And what we see is that the electric field, or the force, I should say, the force is going to end up being KQQ over B squared. And the reason is that if B is much, much greater than A, then B times A plus B becomes B squared. You can see that if you factor a B out of this you get a b squared times a over b plus 1. And a over b goes to 0. So you get a b squared times 1, which is b squared. OK, in this case, there's not a lot to think about uh, in terms of whether our answer made sense. But we could go back and take a look. Uh, we know that, let's just check a couple of things. We know that the electric field from a positive charge distribution points away from that charge distribution. So we expect our electric field to point in the positive x direction. So let's make sure that's what we have. We have our electric field pointing in the positive x direction. And if we put a positive charge, little q, at some location on the positive x-axis, the force is going to be on the, along the positive x-axis. So we have a positive a force pointing, pointing in the positive x direction. And then we showed that under these conditions for B much greater than A, the force ends up looking like the force between two point charges.